so all right uh, good afternoon everybody so I think you're uh, doing pretty good so today we'll discuss about the description or the setting of our of our hack SMS model right so by this time so today I'm gonna show you how to what uh, today I'm gonna uh, describe what are the components of hack SMS model so by this time uh, you already you have already known that the setup of hack SMS model right so if you already installed this hack SMS model in your computer so now let's see for setting up any hack SMS model what type of module we need to know there are three basic module for hack SMS the number one is the basin model this is the basin model and then the met model and number three is the control specification so, right so for setting up any hack sms model there will be some other module but for running any simple model you need this basin model that means you have to prepare your basin model for example you are going to model a basin like this right so you have outlet here and this is the stream these are the stream and your precipitation is here so you can set up this model in two different ways because hack sms model supports two type of two types of model right so it is you can set up the model as lumped model or you can set up the model as a graded model if it is lumped model then you need one precip precip gaze here or any other location within this watershed this is watershed so the model will be lumped model you have outlet here and you are just uh, putting the forcing this is called forcing so this is a part of meteorological model so inside the basin model you have to provide the area of the basin you have to provide the length of the stream and the stream information and the soil information and you have to provide also the transformation method because we'll compute the runoff here at the outlet of the sub watershed or the basin right so for generating runoff we need a transformation math method you can use any unit hydrograph method right there are some methods you can choose one so I'll show you what type of methods are there and which one is more convenient to use so depending on the necessary condition given for your model area or the availability of your data at the location where you are going to set up your model you can choose the location and also in the control specification you have to specify the duration of the simulation so if you just uh, want to simulate a specific event for example if an storm surge or any rainfall event that already happened you are going to model this one so your model will be like event based model otherwise if you want to simulate like for five years or six years or even 10 years or 15 years so then your model will be continuous model so for event based model your method loss method will be different because if precipitation occurs here that means the rainfall occurs here what will happen there will be some losses right 
what type of losses will be there water will be lost from uh, leaves and branches of trees because trees will be there and there may be open water sources so water will be lost by evapotranspiration water will be lost as evaporation right and there will be other losses so we have to select a loss method for event based method you can choose different loss method or for the calculation or running your model for a certain period which is few years long so what do you have to choose you have to choose soil moisture accounting or it is known as the SMA method so the loss method is very important method in heck SMS model right and in the basin model you have to specify basically the basin property the area of the basin the stream links where will be the outlet and is there any diversion or is there any input or something like that right so in met model it will provide your forcing means precipitation so if you provide precipitation as depth in inches or in millimeter or in centimeter you will get a stream flow or runoff here a stream flow in a uh, feet cube per second or meter cube per second based on the selection of your model units right so this this is how we can set up a model so for the calibration purpose you have to have an observation here if you want to calibrate this basin because this is your outlet you have to download or you have to collect the time series observed stream flow and then you have to generate your observed time series stream flow and you have to import this observation into the model and then when you just run the model again it will compare these two observation and the simulation and it will show the curve or the graph here so time will be along the x-axis and then it is uh, CMS that means cubic meter per second and then it may be like this or anything and there will be another line it will be maybe this way so your objective of calibration will be messing these two lines together right and then you have to test the calibration by different methods right what are the methods you have to calculate the r square value the correlation coefficient right and you have to calculate the percentage bias p bias right and you also have to calculate other parameters <coughs> like ns e nash soot cleave efficiency of this model so we have our script so if you have this stream flow if you have your observed stream flow then i can compare in our programming i have my scripts so that will compare these two and will calculate this correlation coefficient r square and it will also calculate the percentage bias and also calculate this nash soot cleave efficiency and it will also calculate different parameters so by comparing these values so if the r square is like 0.95 the model performance is very good our calibration is good and if the percentage bias is close to zero that means these values are same 
and if this NSE it is similar to this hello the one is for best and zero for bad so our objective is to increase the R square and NEC close to one and percentage bias should be as lower as possible this is how we can calibrate our model so when I'll demonstrate then I'll clarify all these things but the basic thing is that we have to select an area and then we have to specify our outlet so this is the physics of heck sms model it is not working why heck sms it, it is hydrological model so it is a simple model but it is very very effective so you have to collect the shape file your region you have to calculate the area in square mile or in square kilometer uh, whatever you choose but you have to specify the area so you can use GIS software to calculate your uh, basin boundary and for the calculation of area of the study location or study basin or sub watershed and then you need different types of calculation so what will happen if the watershed is not only one it is divided by this type of sub watershed there will be two or more sub watershed see this is one sub basin this is another and there may be other so you have to specify this five this five sub watershed this way one two three four five six right so what will be from here to here and from here to here from here to here from here to here and from uh, here to here so that means here you have to specify a junction and then this water will be convey transported from this point to this point and there will be another junction and then all the water will be accumulated here then it will transfer at the outlet so how the water will be transported through the channel or a stream you have to specify a routing method so for this case since the model is hydrologic model so you have to specify your hydrologic routing method like musk and gum method right it is the simple method we can use there is uh, two parameters for musk and gum method k and the x so you know the value of x ranges from 0 to 0 0.5 so you have to choose in between these values and then you have to calculate the k value k value means it is the travel time so how much time will take the water that will be generated from this sub watershed and it will be accumulated here and how much time it will take this water from here to here that is the value of k we can use different methods for calculating this we need the slope of the basin slope of the channel and we also need the velocity we can use Manning's equation we can use other method that I will show how to calculate and after calculating all these things we will just put these values in our model and then we will run our model for a certain time period that will be specified in the control specification and then our model will run and this is how we can set up our simple HEC SMS model right so I think this is the best way to set up this model so okay let's see so in the next video I'll show how to set up a simple HEC SMS model in the computer so for now I'm um, signing out so thanks for watching